So we all know that Premiere Pro hasn't really changed that much since, well, the 90s. I mean, take a look at the crop effect, for example. We still don't have rounded corners like this. We have a bunch of Microsoft PowerPoint transitions, and if you want to have a typewriter effect, you gotta animate the crop effect, which is just awful. But what if one simple upgrade could give you a rounded crop effect, amazing volumetric rays, a typewriter effect that actually works, and so much more. Today I'll show you 10 insane tools from Film Impact, a plugin that adds fresh effects and transitions directly into the effects library, which is much better than these transitions that crash Premiere. Now, there's two ways you can access Film Impact. You can simply use the effects library, and here you'll find all the effects and transitions, or you can access them from the Film Impact dashboard. Whatever flips your pancake. By the way, you can try it out for free, so I highly recommend you download it and follow along with me. Number one, normal crop versus rounded crop. Imagine you want to crop out the prompting bar from ChatGPT for one of your videos. Well, in Premiere, you can use the crop effect effect and crop it out however you want. As you already know, you can't add rounded corners. You gotta use a mask for that, and we all know masking in Premiere. No. Instead, look for the rounded crop effect from Film Impact. Drag it on your clip like you always do and head over to the effect controls. In here, you'll see a lot more controls. Let's start by adjusting the crop properties until we have the chat box only. Then find the roundness property and increase it. As you can see, this will round the corners so you won't have to use masks anymore and you can ditch the old crop effect. There's also other stuff you can play around with. For example, the feather, which is quite cool. But take a look at this. You can even change the angle of your crop. Thank you so much, Film Impact. Just like that, you can create amazing animations in seconds. This block motion animation is also from Film Impact, by the way. Which brings us to number two, brand new transitions. Again, you can access them all from here. If you click apply, they will be applied to your selected clip like this. If you're using the effects library, just drag them to your clip like this. The longer you drag it out, the slower the animation will be. If you click the transition, by the way, you can go to the effect controls and actually make you adjustments. First of all, you can click surprise me. That will pick a random seed and most of the time you'll get something cool out of it. To go back to default, just click the reset button. Curve in here is the graph that the transition will follow. First you can pick a type, for example bounce, which will behave like this. Now in the settings below, you can adjust the curve even more. The amount of bounces, 1, 2, 3, 4, and of course the velocity. A cool one is the elasticity. Look at how it behaves on a low percentage versus a high percentage. That's pretty cool, right? Now there's so much more to explore in here, but I love the fact that you can choose the amount of motion blur. Oh yeah, before I forget, if you have an animation or transition you like, save it as a preset and boom. I really wish I found this earlier. I even juiced up this animation by adding the camera shake effect to it. It's the same as the wiggle and after effects, but you'll get much more control. With this effect, you can add camera shake to tripod footage, for example, like I did with this clone video from our last tutorial. Or you can use it to enhance your animations like I do. Let's move on to the next next transition, the flip motion for example. As you can see, this creates a cool animation. Now I want to replicate this one on these two Premiere icons, so I simply select the both of them in the timeline and then in the dashboard apply the flip motion transition. Now if we play it back, you'll see that both the icons are turning from the same angle. To fix that, select one of the transitions and go to the effect controls. Now again, you can completely customize the transitions the way you want, but for now, just click the reverse angle feature. That makes it turn from the other side. Look at this beautiful animation now, in just three clicks. Of course, you can apply transitions in between your clips as well. For example, the earthquake transition. This one is sick. The next smart tool is gonna blow your mind. This is a simple PNG of my company logo, nothing special. If I apply shape flow, it will add this super cool animation following the shapes of my logo. This of course is highly customizable. You can ease the animation in and out. I mean, look at this beautiful curve. Or you can play with the start point to adjust the position from where the animation will start. And slap some volumetric rays on this logo and look at that. Speaking of volumetric rays, it's time for number three. Turning your videos from this to this. Take a moment and enjoy the beautiful god rays. You can do that with this effect, volumetric rays. You can just drag it on your clip and in most cases, it will already look beautiful. But there's a lot you can do to blend it in with your video so that it actually looks real. Again, you can mess around with the surprise me button. For now, play around with the intensity property 
The highlights only property will determine how sensitive it is to the highlights of your video. So if you decrease it, more light rays will appear. The ray length does what it says. Now let's move on to the color. In this video, we don't really need to adjust it because it looks beautiful already. Play around with it and see what you'll get. With the colorize property, you can then blend it in with your video perfectly. Yeah, let me control Z this one. The volumetric rays effect doesn't just work on videos. You can also enhance your animations with this. Take a look at this cool animation of a window. And now with the light rays enabled. Absolutely stunning. Now here's another cool one. This is a PNG of a lion. Let me show you something. So first I added the pull motion transitions to it. Then I also added the camera shake effect. And that already looks really cool. Next, right click your clip and choose nest. Then on this nested sequence, add the volumetric rays effect. We actually nested this clip so that the volumetric rays react to the transition which makes it look awesome. I added the orange color to the god rays because I added this fire particle overlay to it. And that looks amazing. Number four, a vignette effect that works so good. Let's say you have this white background for your animation, but you want to make it pop a little more. Well, find the film impact vignette effect and add it to your clip. Boom. You don't even have to touch it. But if you want, you can. And there's so much more you can do compared to Lemetri. From adjusting the width to height, scale, angle, and whatnot. Definitely worth playing around. Five, a typewriter effect. You're gonna love this one. So find the typewriter transition in the effects library, then drag it to the edge of your clip. Boom. It's not just a wipe transition, no. It's actually typing your text in here. And here it comes again. If you click the transition, you're able to make tons of adjustments. For example, the timing. Let's say you want the type effect to start from the second word instead of the first one. Then increase the start property until the first word is fully visible. Then it will start typing from the second word. Super simple. Next, try enabling the carrot controls. That will really sell the effect. Of course, you can change the color or even change the width and height to your liking. And of course, adjust the position by offsetting it. Looks wonderful. By the way, if you want to see it blink before you start typing, simply increase the start line delay. Also increase the end line delay if you want it to blink once you're done typing. And of course, increase the amount of blinks to about 10 or something. And look at that. Time for number six, the text animation. Stop using the transform effect to create text animations because the text animation will do it for you. Just slap it on your text layer and look what it does by default. Isn't that amazing? I usually just spam the surprise me button a few times and that will give me amazing results. Take a look at the preset menu. The amount of different presets you can apply to your text is just amazing. I just played around with all these properties and I highly recommend you do too. Let me save you my text animation as a preset because I'm definitely using that one again. Number seven, the grow effect. How many times have you created this stupid scale animation? That ends today. Let me show you a case where I'm using the effect a lot. I zoom in a lot on my face before adding a cut. That way I can hide jump cuts. So instead of using the motion properties, I'll just add a cut to the moment where I want to start zooming. Then search for the grow effect and drag it to your clip. In the effect controls, make sure duration is enabled. And for me, 0.5 works perfectly. The grow percentage will decide how much your video will scale. And then with the anchor point, you can of course choose the position of your clip at the end of the scale animation. Then increase the ease in and ease out properties. That makes the animation super smooth. This looks amazing. Eight, lights and blur effects. As you can see, you'll have tons of lights and blurs effect. The volumetric rays, for example, is also coming from here. But I really wanted to show you the bulky blur effect. If you apply it to your clip, the blurriness will look like it came from an actual camera. It looks a thousand times better than Gaussian blur. One use case, you can animate the blur amount, for example, that way it will look like your camera is out of focus at the beginning and then slowly focusing on the lights. There you have it, a perfect lens blur in Premiere Pro. Number nine, focus blur. This one is another effect you can just grab and drag on your clip and boom, it looks better instantly. This adds depth of field to your video, which makes it more cinematic. You can adjust the width and height of the effect, then play around with the angle and with the position. You're literally shifting your camera focus. Guys, I'm so glad I found Film Impact because I loved it so much, I reached out to them and now they're sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. At least try the free trial because it's something that every video editor needs. Number 10. If you still haven't started learning After Effects, you're falling behind, my friend. So to keep up, click the video right here on my left to learn After Effects. Thank you guys so much for watching.